Hey everyone, I'm Harvest Build Destroy, and this is a channel about RTS games. In this video, I'm going to talk about Age of Mythology 2, which doesn't exist and hasn't been announced, but that I hope will exist someday. Age of Mythology is a game I like very much, and although I haven't been an active player in over a decade, it's probably still my second or third most played RTS game. But there are some things I didn't like so much about Age of Mythology that I think could be improved upon in a sequel. As much as I love Age of Mythology, and Age of Empires 3 for that matter, I'm decidedly of the opinion that Age of Empires 2 is the all-around superior age game, and that some of the ways that Age of Mythology and Age of Empires 3 attempted to innovate were a bit clunky. I don't think it's mere coincidence that Age of Empires 2 is so much more popular despite being older. I think Relic would be crazy not to design Age of Empires 4 to be more in line with Age of Empires 2 in terms of gameplay. However, with that said, I do think that the ideal that Age of Mythology and Age of Empires 3 were striving toward is an interesting concept. That is, a faster paced age game with a lower defender's advantage. But I would rather that game be Age of Mythology 2 instead of Age of Empires 4. The power spiky nature of god favor and god powers lends itself more to a faster paced game, and stone as a resource really only makes sense in a game with a really high defender's advantage like Age of Empires 2. If buildings are already really difficult to destroy, it makes sense for you to have to gather a resource that you can't use for anything else in order to make defensive structures. So let's get into it. The first thing I'd like to see in Age of Mythology 2 is something I've mentioned in the past. I'd like to see the function of the God Favor resource altered to be more like munitions in Company of Heroes. Instead of one-time use God powers, I'd like to see them given cooldowns and cost favor to cast. I've always felt that Age of Mythology places a bit too much emphasis on power spikes, which ends up rewarding overly turtly play, and this seems kind of antithetical in a game that would seem on the surface to be a faster paced Age of Empires. Anyone who played the game in its heyday will know how quickly an Ancestor's Eclipse combo can turn the tide of a match. As a Thor player, I remember casting Frost on my opponent's army right as I hit Mythic, followed by Fimblewinter, and then taking free pot shots at my opponent's economy while their army was frozen. Similarly, Set could use his Vision God power to cast Tornado or Meteor anywhere on the map the instant he hit Mythic. These sorts of power spikes always seemed a bit excessive to me, and forcing players to gather a specific resource in order to cast their God powers would make them a bit more of a deliberate investment. Advancing to the next stage is something you would do for other reasons anyway, so getting a free god power and in the Titans expansion myth unit always seemed a bit over the top to me. In addition to being used for god powers and myth units, I'd also like to see favor used to upgrade individual human units with advanced weapons and armor, kind of like in Company of Heroes and Dawn of War. In Relic games, upgrading your squad's weapons often has a dramatic effect on how you use your units, and I think this dynamic could be interesting in an age game. Since the focus of age games is much more on managing your economy, units seldom have castable abilities and counter each other using a fairly complicated rock paper scissors style system. Instead of just increasing base stats, I think it would be cool if you could upgrade units for favor in order to give them additional bonuses, or in the case of armor, resistances. On a similar note, I've always liked how most of your units could switch between melee and ranged attacks in Age of Empires 3, and being able to toggle between a primary and secondary weapon could be interesting in this context. For example, let's say a hoplite has a long spear as its primary weapon and a short sword as its secondary weapon. Maybe the spear can attack from a tile away and does bonus damage to mounted units. The sword is melee ranged and doesn't have a bonus versus mounted units, but its attack rate is higher and will end up doing a bit more damage to non-mounted units in the long run. I think it's worth noting that there's probably a limit to how complicated this sort of upgrade system could be. Beyond a certain point it would be too much, and would just increase the game's learning curve to unreasonable levels. I'm not sure exactly where the line would be, but I don't think it would be a good idea for each unit to have more than a small handful of upgrade options, and I think some overlap would probably be good as well. For example, maybe all units with the same weapon type could pick the same upgrade, and that these upgrades would all be tied to minor gods. For instance, let's say you pick Ares as one of your minor gods when you age up, and he gives you an upgrade for units with swords that gives him an attack bonus versus infantry while using swords. Perhaps the exact numbers would be different for different units, but Hoplites, Hippaspists, Hippocons, and any other unit with a sword as either its primary or secondary weapon would be able to get this upgrade. As a general rule, I imagine it would make sense for the bonuses to be greater for a unit's primary weapon than for its secondary weapon. Otherwise you could end up with a near-perfect unit that could kind of counter everything if you just toggle your weapons at the right time. Balancing these upgrades so that this wouldn't happen would be a fine line, but I think it's at least possible. If done right, a mechanic like this could encourage players to think a bit more carefully about how they engage, without overburdening them with the sorts of MOBA-esque castable abilities that we see in other RTS games. Micro and Age games has always been more about positioning and making sure your units are attacking the right targets, and I think a mechanic like this would fit the style and feel of the franchise. So in general, I think it would be interesting if Favor was more like a power spike resource, similar to munitions in Company of Heroes. In Age of Mythology as it is, Favor is used for myth units and major and minor god-specific upgrades. It's kind of like Gold 2.0, since Gold is used for military units, military upgrades, and advancing to the next age. 
Having players spend favor on god powers and weapon upgrades would give gold and favor more clearly defined roles, as well as limit the scope of the game's power spikes, or at least make them deliberate investments. Casting a god power gives you an advantage right here and now, unlike upgrades which affect all future units of a certain type you create. The same would go for divine weapons. Unlike an armory upgrade, when the unit dies, the weapon is gone. However, for all of this to work, I think the way that favor is gathered would need to be altered a bit too, or rather, made equivalent for all civilizations. In Age of Mythology, the Greeks are the only civilization that has to manually gather favor with villagers. I think for the system I've outlined so far to work properly, this has to be the case for every civilization. In order to turn god powers into deliberate investments, you need to be required to task villagers to gather favor instead of other resources. Sure, conceptually it's kinda cool that the Norse gain favor by fighting, but it wouldn't work so well with what I've been discussing in this video. If you want to continually cast god powers every time they're off cooldown, you need to be sacrificing something else to do that. By dedicating a larger number of villagers to gathering favor, you're going to have less food, wood, and gold to spend on units and upgrades. I don't think this would work so well if only one civilization has to sacrifice villager work time to gather favor. I also think it would make sense for the player to somehow be incentivized to spread their temples out instead of just building them all in one easy to defend location. One solution to this could be to make it so that you can't build another temple within a certain distance of another, or to reduce a temple's favor gather rate based on its proximity to the closest other temple, kind of like farms in Battle for Middle Earth 2. There could also be nodes around the map called Sacred Ground or something like that, which would be the only places you could build temples, just like you can only build town centers on settlements. But however it would work, I think it would be better if players had to defend a larger portion of the map to gather a larger amount of favor. But beyond just favor, there are a few other things about how the economy works in Age of Mythology that I don't like so much either. For one, there are no trash units. Every single human unit costs gold. This means that if you can interrupt your opponent's ability to gather gold, you can stop them from making units. I don't think it's such a good idea for players to have such a pronounced jugular vein, so to speak. Only being able to make trash units would be enough of an Achilles heel already. Something I've always liked about Age games in comparison to other RTS games is that they generally don't have mechanics where you can get caught with your pants down and lose instantly. The defender's advantage is pretty high and you start with a scouting unit. There are generally no build order wins and there's nothing equivalent to a proxy dark shrine. The lack of trash units in Age of Mythology has always felt a little bit more like these kinds of things to me, at least on a much smaller scale. I've also always thought that Egyptian buildings costing gold instead of wood was an absolutely awful mechanic. It's so important for the roles of different resources to be clear in an RTS game if there's any intention for it to be played competitively. The more you mix and match what a particular resource is used for in a game with three or more resources, the less meaningful information you get from scouting your opponent's economy. In Age of Empires 2, if you scout your opponent not long before they hit Feudal Age, and you see how many farms they have, whether or not they've taken their gold or stone, and so on, this gives you a lot of information about what they're currently capable of, because the functions of the different resources in that game are clearly defined. If you see your opponent on stone, you're probably facing a tower rush, or maybe a market fast castle into unique units depending on the civilization. If you see two villagers on gold, you're probably facing men at arms, whereas if you see three or more, it might be archers or a fast castle. But if you're playing against the Egyptians on a land map in Age of Mythology, your opponent's economy will look pretty much the same regardless of what they're intending to do for quite a while, since wood is only used for archers and ships along with certain upgrades. Most of the time, you're just going to see your opponent gathering a bunch of food and gold, and the exact number of villagers on each won't tell you as much as in Age of Empires 2 because pretty much everything except villagers costs gold for the Egyptians. I feel similarly about economic upgrades in Age of Mythology, and Age of Empires 3 for that matter. In Age of Empires 2, all economic upgrades cost food and wood. But in Age of Mythology, upgrading your food gather rate costs wood and gold, upgrading your gold gather rate costs food and wood, and upgrading your wood gather rate costs food and gold. This might seem intuitive on the surface, but like with Egyptian buildings, to make economic upgrades cost gold is to muddy the waters of what gold, as a resource, is for. It's supposed to be for military units and upgrades. In theory, when you dedicate villager work time to gathering gold, you're gathering a resource that can't be used to expand your economy. This gives you a lot more to work with when you scout your opponent's economy. Like I said before, the more you mix and match what a particular resource can be used for, the less agency you have as a player to adapt to your opponent based on what you scout. If gold is used for military units, military upgrades, buildings, and economic upgrades all at the same time, scouting that your opponent is gathering a bunch of gold doesn't tell you much. So in general, if Age of Mythology 2 is ever actually announced, I hope that the functions of the game's resources and the methods of gathering them are equivalent for all of the game's civilizations. Also, it's important for villagers to have to drop resources off at buildings, unlike the Atlanteans or all civilizations in Age of Empires 3. So much of what makes base building fun and satisfying goes out the window when you no longer have to think about the paths your villagers will take on their way back to the drop-off site. The more players have to think about their base layout, the better. 
If you find this sort of thing tedious, I would tend to wonder why you would choose to play a full resource RTS game with base building over a real-time tactics game in the first place. On a similar note, I've never particularly liked how you can only build town centers on settlements in Age of Mythology. The only virtue to it that I see is that you have to be able to defend a larger area of the map to increase your population limit, as you can only build 10 houses. But having to decide where to place your town centers in Age of Empires 2 is an important and interesting decision, and I think more was lost than was gained with the settlement mechanic. Having to drop resources off at buildings is important here too. Age of Empires 3 did away with settlements, but deciding where to place town centers wasn't quite as big of a deal there either, because villagers didn't have to drop resources off at buildings. I'm not a big fan of farms containing infinite food either, but I think I could budge on that one for the sake of creating a faster paced age game, as long as villagers still have to drop resources off at buildings. I would, however, like the farms to be significantly larger. This way, the number of them that you could fit around an individual drop-off site without double layering would be relatively small, and the efficiency of farms on the second layer would be considerably lower, since the villagers would have to walk farther to drop off the resources. In the super late game in Age of Empires 3, you could kind of just clump all of your mills and plantations into one easy to defend location. Since villagers didn't have to drop off resources, there was no reason not to do this, and I think this sort of thing should be discouraged. If your food economy is to be something you can set up and then forget about, which with infinite farms it would be, the game should at least incentivize you to spread them around the map a little more. A larger economy should be harder to defend. I would also be inclined to increase the scaling of the trade cart mechanic for similar reasons. A trade route that's only a screen or two long shouldn't net you much gold, regardless of how many trade carts you have, and if you can defend a trade route stretching from one corner of the map to another, you should be rewarded for it. I also think trade carts should cost at least some gold, like in Age of Empires 2. This might seem to contradict what I said before about muddying the waters of what resources are used for, but I think trade carts are a special case. The idea is that trade carts need to take a while to pay for themselves. If you want an infinite supply of gold, not only do you need to defend a large area of the map, you need to plan ahead. No one's going to rush for trade carts in the early game anyway, so it doesn't interfere with what you scout. There are a couple of other things not specifically tied to how the economy functions that I would also like to see changed. I am in general not a fan of the Titans expansion, and always thought Age of Mythology was much better in its vanilla state. To me, the auto queue function defeats the purpose of what makes RTS games compelling in the first place. I don't mind it being an option in custom games, but a function that makes your buildings literally macro themselves has no place in competitive multiplayer RTS. I feel the same way about the Titan mechanic. There's nothing sophisticated or difficult about building or microing a Titan. It's just a final trump card for players who hide behind their starting towers and abuse the game's various power spikes. If the game's premise is to be a faster paced Age of Empires, this is precisely the sort of playstyle that its design should discourage. But like with Auto Queue, I don't mind if people want to make Titans in custom games, they just shouldn't be enabled in ranked play. I also question the point of giving players a free myth unit every time they age up in the Titans, which just seems to further reward the first player to advance. Aging up first is still a significant advantage even in Age of Empires 2, where you don't get anything for free the second you advance. Conceptually, I don't like the idea of starting with free towers around your base either, but with the game's strong emphasis on all these different power spikes, particularly at the moment when a player reaches the next age, they seem kind of necessary. As I see it, that's a pretty messy band-aid solution to a deeper problem. I guess that's the through line of what I'd like to see in Age of Mythology 2. I hope it's designed in such a way that you don't need to start with a ring of towers around your base in order for it to feel somewhat balanced. I think tweaking the roles of the different resources in the way I've discussed here would go a long way to help mitigate this issue, as well as just generally making for a robust competitive RTS game. And if you don't consider that a worthy goal, well, you're watching the wrong channel. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, rate, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the notifications bell. See you soon.